Hi, and welcome back to the Low Level Devil Channel's Raspberry Pi Bare Metal series. In a previous video, we covered a serial communications protocol called I2C or I squared C and used I2C to communicate with an LCD display. In this video, I'll cover another serial communications protocol known as SPI or SPI. I won't go into the details of how SPI works internally at the signal level as the Raspberry Pi implements this all in hardware just like it does for the I2C. So we just have to use the registers, same as we did in the I2C videos. Uh, in this video, I'm going to use a different format, whereas before we had a separate video to cover all of the details of I2C in the data sheet and walked through the wiring. Uh, um, writing the code and then had a separate video to interface with a device. This time I want to quickly go over where to find the information in the data sheet, um, how it's connected, and just walk through the sections of the code that I've previously written instead of live coding it. So that way we can kind of fit more content into a shorter space of time. So let me know if you prefer this format as well. So let's get started. First I'm going to go to the, actually I'll show you, on, here's on, on Amazon the uh, actual device I'm going to be using. It's a 8 character um, LED display. Uh, I'd recommend getting like a 4 pack like this because they're pretty cheap. It's $12, you get 4 of them. You can actually daisy chain them together as well so it's kind of neat. In this one I'm only going to be using one of them. But um, let's go over to the data sheet. So if you go to section 10, where it covers SPY, so it's page 148. So right here at the top gives you an introduction to SPY, talks about the different wirings. Um, let's see if we go down here. You, this actually gives you an idea of how it works at the, uh, at the actual signal level but we don't really need to worry about that. Um, we're going to use the Raspberry Pi as a master and then the device as a slave. So let me scroll down here to where the registers are concerned. So yeah, down here we see that the uh, SPI0 interface is at the register 7E204000. So this is what we need to use as our base for the registers and the registers involved are the cable select that's the first register the FIFO the clock uh, data length um, and then there's a couple at lossy and uh, DMA uh, controls we actually aren't going to use those last two but we'll, we'll create a mapping for them as well and then like our other videos if you followed this far along you should understand the process of finding this data this information in the data sheet we have the CS register and then below we have the details of what each of the bits means like this means there's you know d there's uh, more to read in the FIFO this means it's ready to transfer data in the FIFO so uh, all these uh, all this data is here for you to consume and understand as well and I've mapped it all out in the code so I'm just gonna move over to the actual code so under our include uh, peripherals I've created a spy.h um, and we have our registers remember our cable select FIFO clock data length the ones that we care about here and then I've created a define like I did in the I2C video where we point it to the uh, P base plus that location in in the memory mapped register. I created some defines here for different uh, flags on the uh, control status register. So each of these, so that we can use them in our code instead of you know writing these things individually ourselves. So that's the peripheral header in our application header for the spy.h we have a couple of simple functions one to initialize spy spy in it then we have a spy send receive and then a spy send and a spy receive and these two will actually use spy send receive because uh, unlike i2c 
in Spy, whenever you send a byte, you actually receive a byte as well. So you send 10 bytes, you receive 10 bytes. And usually when you send, you actually don't care about the data that comes back. So you can set either of these buffers to zero and it will ignore writing to them or reading from them. So let me go into our spy.c implementation. Right at the very top of our is our spy in it. And this is where we have the different uh, GPIO pins involved. So these GPIO pins 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, these are all the SPI0 interface pins. So if you set them to the their uh, GPIO function alt 0, then they will be set into SPI0 interface mode. So the first thing we do is set those all to that interface mode and then enable them. So to go over each of them individually, so 7 is the cable select 1, 8 is the cable select 0, which we are going to use. I'll show in the uh, in a diagram, well not in a diagram, but in a little picture in the corner I'll show how we have ours wired up. So I have the red wire connecting to our cable select which which connects to CS0, so pin 8. MISO is master in slave out, which we don't need because the master does not need to read from the slave in this case. Mosi is master out slave in so the master is writing out and the slave is reading in so this goes to our DN pin which I'm using a brown cable for in the in the image and that's uh, pin 10 or GPIO 10 and then GPIO 11 is the clock so and that points to the of course the clock on our device and I'm using an orange cable for that and then the other two cables are VCC and ground. You can just connect them to any of the VCC and ground on the uh, on the Raspberry Pi. So moving on to the spy send receive, this is where the pretty much most of the work is done. So we pass in a chip select, and um, that's going to uh, identify what we're which we're sending it to. Um, the S buffer is is the uh, send buffer, R buffer is the read buffer, and U32 size, that's the size of the buffer sent. So the first thing we do is we set the SPI zero's data length to size. Um, then we need to set the cable, or not cable select, the uh, control status register. We need to turn off the CS byte. We need to turn, put the chip select shifted over by zero, so that's the first bit. And we OR it with the clear RX bit, clear TX bit, and the TA bit. So these, of course, are the the read FIFO, read uh, FIFO, and then the transmit FIFO. So now we have two variables here, a read count and a write count. Now we want to loop in this main outer loop, we're going to loop while the read count is less than size or the write count is less than size. So the first thing we do is go through the write count. If write count is less than size and the control status registers TXD bit is set, that means we are ready to transfer. So if we actually did pass in a valid buffer, which you know you have the option to pass in null. So if we did pass in a valid buffer, then we're going to um, add the next byte in that buffer to the FIFO. And now if you don't, if you're not familiar with this format here, this is kind of just a shorthand format of doing this. So this is the same as saying s buffer, saying the the FIFO equals the s buffer zero and then increasing the f buffer s buffer's pointer by 1 so that's a shorthand way of doing that essentially so now i've added that to the fifo and if not i just add 0 to the fifo that means that i don't have a send buffer but you always have to write when you're sending when you're reading as well so uh then i update our write count 
and now I do the exact same thing essentially for read count but I check the RxD instead of the TxD and this time I actually grab the data from the FIFO and I do the same here as I uh, dereference our pointer set data to it and increment it. It's the same as again doing our buffer 0 equals data and then our buffer plus plus. It's the same as doing that. So now with that I implement, I uh, increment our read count. And then after that's finished what I want to do is loop while cable select is not done read any data that's still on the the uh, read FIFO and just kind of throw it away you know in case there was some other data going on the line at the same time maybe another device was writing that I didn't want to read from then you know then I'm just going to read it and throw it away you probably won't need this if you're only connecting one device but just in case I put it there and at the very end I turn off the TA bit on our uh, control status register and spy send and spy receive are pretty simple you just call send receive pass in the data as the read buffer and size or pass in the data as the write buffer and size and then finally I put together a LED display dot C that has a simple interface uh, first at the top I have a little mapping of the uh, digits so each of these bits represents one of the lines on one of the L uh, seven segment displays. Um, the first, the very first bit being the dot, because these have a, a, a period as well. Um, and then starting at the top and going around the circle. So this would be the very top one. This would be the top right for the next one. So this represents the digit zero then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So at the very top uh, here I'm calling LED, I'm implementing the uh, LD, LED display init function and uh, this will actually send an LED display send command so let me go over that one first. There's actually a data sheet in a specific format that these use. If you look at the yeah, if you look at this display, you'll see that it says max 7219. That's an actual protocol that these implement for communications. And the there's more than just this type of display that use it. There's other types that use it. But essentially for these displays, what that essentially means is there's two bytes that you send to send a command, an opcode and a data so every every time you send data it's always two bytes one the first byte is the opcode the second byte is the data and the opcode i put together in here in this led dis led display dot h the very first one being a no op and then a digit zero digit one through seven now these actually represent one of the eight digits so digit zero would be this very first one digit um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And um, then we have a decode mode, intensity of the brightness essentially, a scan limit, shutdown, and a display test. So these are all the different opcodes you can send to it. Let me save this. Um, so going back to here, so we send these these two as one command. So now in our display init function we have to call scan limit I'm setting it to 7 which if I recall correctly that's that means I only have one of those things connected I think if you set this to 15 and you daisy chain two together it should work um, at being able to to use both of them together um, the next one decode mode set to 0 shut down setting to 1 um, intensity set to zero and display test to zero then I'm just again setting the intensity to five I believe it's zero through fifteen are the values 
So now that we've went over the display send command already, LED display clear, essentially what I'm doing here is I'm looping from digit 0 to digit 7 as the opcodes and I'm just setting the value 0 and that's not the digit display 0 this is actually 0 as in none of the um, LEDs will be lit up so so this is essentially clearing the display for each of the digits now uh, I have a function to set the display intensity which is called the op opcode LD intensity passed in with the value and LED set digit so this is the one where I'm using our map up here so the very first thing I do is grab in the value so if you put in a 1 I'm gonna look up the in our digit table the value 1 and this this is the actual value that we want to use for for the uh, data section in our command so in that case and if you pass in a flag for dot then we'll set the high bit as well um, so then what we're going to call is LED display send command with LED digit plus the digit you passed in and that will uh, yes you know, sorry LED digit plus the the digit being not the value you want it to s display but which of the digits you want it to display on so the you know LED you pass in say you want this on the fifth digit you want to display two you would pass in the value two and the digit five that's so that will set it at LD digit zero plus five which if you look at this it'll be z essentially the same as saying LD digit five and then put the value for that and that will set the um, the value on the display to display that digit so if we go to the kernel in our kernel I've s added some sections here the first thing we do is call spy in it followed by LED display in it followed by LED display clear because sometimes there's some leftover data when you start it up and then I loop from I0 to 9 and then for each of the displays remember it's there's seven segments on it so for segment 0 I set the value 0 without the, the dot because I'm not using the dot um, and then you know I loop through so essentially what you're gonna get is each of the displays showing the value 0 and then each of the displays showing the value 1 and then 2 all the way up to 9 and then after that's done I'm going to just set the intensity to different levels I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell on the video but that's that's what it'll show and then LED display clear so I'm gonna clear it again sleep for two seconds and then I'm showing how you can actually write, make your own digits and stuff as well so I can write out the word hello this would represent the H character E L L and O and I'm going to display them on digit 4, digit 3, digit 2, digit 1 and digit 0 and then I just call the shutdown command to turn the display off so that's really all there is to the code now I'll just you'll just need to run make like you always do take out the card put it in your raspberry pi and i'll show you a little demo of it working here you go okay it's running through each of the digits zero all the ones all the twos all the way up to nine this is that first loop that we have and then at nine it'll start changing intensity which is kind of hard to see on this video and then we have our hello and there you have it so uh, again if you have any questions about this video or if you have any comments please comment like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and learned something and again let me know if there's uh, if you actually like this format as opposed to others and thanks for watching